they put cock rings on three dudes and had them eat bean burritos and saw who popped a bigger bro. <laughs> the Game Changers is the newest vegan propaganda documentary to hit mainstream along the likes of Cowspiracy and Earthlings using pseudoscience and fear mongering to convince people to go plant based. This movie is clearly an attempt to create a false reality. Not only are these people cherry picked, they are lying about their actual performance. On top of that, do you really think they want you to be healthy? They've made billions off people being sick, going to doctors, in hospitals, stuffing them full of cheap grain, soy, and corn. But now it's called a whole foods plant-based diet if you eat cheap grain, corn, and soy. People have already been eating 70-80% to 80 of their calories from plant foods in America. The movie's narrator is a self-defense trainer for military members. James Wilkes, who also won The Ultimate Fighter, tore ligaments in his knees and started studying nutrition. This is the clown shill they are using to portray this document as his own as opposed to a propaganda piece, making it seem as if it's one person's mission to do good when in reality it's an incredibly well orchestrated plan. The first topic is about Roman gladiators. They found their bone mineral density was high, indicating a quality diet. Bones that have a high mineral density contain high strontium levels, which is what they were testing in the bones to indicate the mineral density. The claim they're making is that vegetarians have higher strontium in their bones than carnivores, but that is simply a myth with no scientific basis. We know that the nutrients needed to deliver calcium to bones are vitamin D3 and vitamin K2, as well as magnesium, of which we need animal foods to properly metabolize. No animal foods equals weak bones. There are two speculative reasons about why the gladiators ate so many grains. One is that they are slaves and grains are a slave food. Two is that grains are very fattening and if you have a layer of fat to protect yourself, it increases your likelihood to survive combat. Uh, so the diet of these gladiators was probably 50 to 60% grain and Fruit and vegetable access was relatively limited. Keep in mind, you know, we didn't have transportation at that point in time. And it is pretty safe to say that these gladiators ate more meat than we do now, uh, especially much higher quality meat. Before we get into the rest of this movie, I want you guys to understand that all of these people we are going to talk about are professional athletes at the top of their sport, or they are retired athletes. Without a doubt, performance enhancing drug use is prevalent with expert levels of execution. And we know male athletes are now allowed to compete in female sports. UFC 202, Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor was staged as a vegan versus carnivore fight, claiming Nate Diaz is a vegan and that Conor McGregor ate two steaks every day. But Nate Diaz isn't vegan. He eats fish and eggs. You are a really healthy guy. Are you still vegan? I'm not 100 percent vegan. I eat eggs. I eat eggs and uh, and um, I do weird stuff. Like I, I eat a little bit of fish from time to time, but I but I try not to. Just like, but when I train for fights, I'm pretty much on an all raw vegan diet. Eat your vegetables. And then what happens was I fight. I cut meat out for about a month. I take the fight. I fight. I come home and I eat some meat. Like all right, it's time. To then they bring up Scott Jurek, an ultra marathoner talking about how he recently became vegan and is going to try to break the record for the Appalachian Trail, questioning how he is going to do so without animal protein in his diet for energy. Of course, they bring in a sports expert saying that energy is from carbohydrates, not from animal protein, but we know the body has metabolic mechanisms to utilize energy from all macronutrient sources, whether it be protein, fat, or carbohydrates and the prevalence of high-fat, low-carb endurance athletes is growing. Up next is Morgan Mitchell, the current Australian 400-meter sprinting champion, at least at the time of this movie. She has seen a huge decline in performance, finishing 23rd out of 24 at a recent World Athletic Championship. This is Dotsie Bausch, a vegan cyclist that did something no one else has ever done at their age ever in Olympic history. I'll let you guys speculate 
on that one. Of course, they have to address the issue of protein from animal foods. And they simply say that animals like cows, pigs, chickens are the middleman because the protein originates in the soil and the feed the animals are consuming. No shit animals are the middleman. They have complex digestive systems and are able to extract nutrients that humans cannot from inedible plant matter. Try feeding a human crude soy and corn stalks. The claim is that vegans get all of the amino acids our bodies need in their diet, at least on paper, when compared to meat eaters. But just because you're putting the amino acids in your body does not mean your body can convert it into protein. I'll link a video at the end here I did on Cam Newton where I explained the Krebs cycle as well as the urea cycle. The body simply cannot handle converting all of these amino acids into protein. It doesn't have enough B vitamins and the amino acid ratios obtained from plant foods is not optimal. They bring up Kendrick Farris, an Olympic weightlifter who hasn't competed since. These athletes always get to their peak eating meat, claim to go vegan, then mysteriously retire. One huge selling point of this documentary is Patrick Baboumian, who has been injured for over three years now and can no longer train anywhere near the top level, if he ever really has. He is not even close to a world-class athlete compared to the likes of Eddie Hall, Brian Shaw, and Thor. Um, someone asked me, how could you get as strong as an ox without eating any meat? And my answer was, have you ever seen an ox eating meat? No, I haven't seen an ox eating meat, but have you seen a human with multiple stomachs, a fermentation chamber, eating in the field 14 hours per day, fermenting grass into fat in their stomach? This is so simple and ridiculous from an anatomical standpoint. Bryant Jennings is a boxer who has been vegan since 2015 and coincidentally was undefeated until he went vegan, losing two of his most recent fights. Then they get an NFL doctor that talks about a meal being related to endothelial health, the health of our arteries and blood vessels. They fed a group of people animal foods one day, showed the fat in the blood, and then plant foods the next day, showing there was no fat in the blood. This is your body delivering fat to your cells after you consume a nutritious meal and is a gross simplification of how the body works. There are many types of lipids in your bloodstream composed of all different types of fatty acids and we know the main cause of endothelial dysfunction has to do with modern foods, refined carbohydrates, sugar, vegetable seed oils that comprise most of standard American diets. But now for some real pseudoscience. Hamburgers increase inflammation by 70%. If any of you saw my Whopper video the other day, we all know a hamburger is only about 10% meat. No shit a piece of broccoli is less inflammatory. The bun itself in a hamburger will poison you. The next topic is antioxidants, and the importance of antioxidants in plant foods is overstated, but vegans never really bring up the most important antioxidant in the body, glutathione as it requires only B vitamins found in animal foods to operate. The process of methylation for glutathione is worlds ahead in terms of importance. Antioxidants from plant foods can be likened to waxing your car, whereas glutathione is like getting an oil change. A large portion of this documentary focuses on linebacker Derek Morgan of the Tennessee Titans, talking so positively about how they converted over a dozen of the Titans vegan. Coincidentally, Derek Morgan went vegan in 2018, got injured that year, and was unable to recover from those injuries, retiring at 30 years old. I can't make this up. Is the rest of the Tennessee Titans going to retire too? The documentary moves in the direction about the narrator being worried for his dad's health, giving children and teens the idea they know better than their parents, that the old traditions of eating meat are wrong. And of course, a man himself, Dr. Caldwell Esselstein. I'm sure many of you know the Seventh-day Adventist, a vegan religious cult by now, as well as a bunch of other plant-based doctors, say coronary heart disease is a Western issue. But if that's the case, why do vegans still have heart attacks and indigenous people do not? That's because the cause of heart disease is linoleic acid, plant-based fats, which the body doesn't recognize as they are inflammatory. 
I've discussed this in many past videos. Then they move on to the classic anti-meat arguments, heterocyclic amines, nitrosamines, TMAO, which I spoke about in my video last week, anti-meat myths debunked. After that, they threw 50 firefighters in a room with Dr. Caldwell Esselstyn's son. Wonder why the dad couldn't be there? Perhaps too weak to travel? He shows them a picture of a clogged artery and says it's from eating meat and dairy. It's completely comical. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe the fat is white. That's from the dairy. Man, those Maasai warriors sucking down milk and beef must have been eating a different type of meat and dairy. Despite a long continued diet of exclusively meat and milk, the men have low levels of serum cholesterol and no evidence for arteriosclerotic heart disease. The narrator of the movie continues shaming his dad that he is stubborn, says his father is a product of where he grew up, an animal-based society. Moving on to Lou Smith, a former NFL player that is now vegan, and again, do we have any professional athletes that are vegan or just a bunch of people who are retired or crippled? On to the golden boy, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Ate eggs and meat to win the Olympia, but then says as he got older, you don't need protein from animals. Saying he loves plants much more than meat. I'm curious why Arnold doesn't get a lot of blowback for being such a sellout to Big Broccoli. The elite chow down on steaks and caviar while telling us to eat soy. Now for the most ridiculous argument of them all. They bring in an anthropologist from Harvard that claims cavemen didn't eat meat, opting for a vegetarian diet, literally lying through their teeth, rewriting history. Of course, they bring up some 25-year-old girl straight out of college who starts saying that humans don't have genetic anatomical or physiological adaptions for meat consumption. I'm assuming that anthropologist from Harvard didn't want these words coming out of his mouth himself. This young woman claims we have longer digestive tracts than carnivores, and we don't. They are actually much closer to other carnivores than herbivores. She claims that a longer digestive tract would allow us more time to digest plant foods, but that's not how it works. You can't digest a food you don't have the enzymes or bacteria for. Doesn't matter how long it sits in your stomach. Cows and gorillas can ferment grass into fat. You eating a steak is like a cow eating grass. That's how different our digestive systems are. This woman also ignores that our stomach acidity is as low as a scavenger's. How convenient for her to miss that. Then Miss Intern brings up vitamin C, saying we are reliant on plants and the reason we see colors is to identify fruits for vitamin C, uh, which is not true as vitamin C is contained in meat and it's not needed in incredibly large amounts in our diet. Another common argument, a big brain requires glucose. Is that why our brain is made out of fatty acids that can only be obtained from animal foods like fish? Is that why our body can make glucose from fat and protein? Is that why babies are born in ketosis? Then they try to say that humans have mouths designed for plant tissue. That's wrong from every angle whatsoever. Herbivores like cattle and goats that graze all day have sandpaper mouths and grinding molars, which are drastically different than humans. But humans started eating meat because of our tool usage and hunting ability, not because of our physical anatomical capabilities. We also have to consider that the human mouth has partially evolved for speech. Then this clown of an anthropologist says the most important thing if you were placed in an ancestral environment would be the knowledge of plant foods. Really? Is that why every single indigenous group consumed the majority of their calories from animal foods? No understanding of the caloric density and nutrient profile of vegetable foods whatsoever. The only thing allowing us to consume so much plant matter is agriculture. On to the classic vitamin B12 argument that Vitamin B12 is contained in dirt, again saying that animals are the middle men, uh, saying that you can get B12 by drinking water or eating dirt on vegetables, but that pesticides, antibiotics, and chlorine kill the vitamin B12 bacteria, which is complete nonsense as most water sources in the world are not polluted with these things. This is the biggest bullshit myth. 
animals absorb B12 that is made by their gut bacteria. Yes, there are some small amounts of microbes in the soil that might contain B12, but that is not any significant amount of the vitamin that is conducive for an herbivore to consume or for a human to consume. Back to marathon runner Scott Jurek, who was supposed to run the Appalachian Trail, ended up tearing his quadricep one week into the race. And he actually moved on, tried to finish the race, but didn't break the record. It's unfortunate they spent so much time and money making this movie. If this came out a year or two ago, then these people might not have fallen apart already. Then Arnold Schwarzenegger starts talking about steak being manly, how it's bullshit, like eat like a man type stuff. With this, they segue into male fertility, trying to make an argument that a plant-based diet is better for sexual health. And what made watching this boring as hell stupid documentary for an hour and a half worth it was this part, guys. They put cock rings on three dudes and had them eat bean burritos and saw who popped a bigger bo <laughs> a bigger boner. I was laughing so hard watching this nonsense shit. So, so the first day they ate a meat burrito and the second day they eat a plant-based burrito and they have this cock ring on while they're sleeping to measure their erection. Yeah, real great science, guys. As ridiculous as this is, I will mention that conventional meats raised in feedlots are highly estrogenic uh, because of atrazine on feed and crops and will usually lower male fertility. Uh, I have a video on this titled, Grain-Fed Beef Will Make You Fat and Flabby. Now we bring in juice boy, Nimai Delgado. They try to make the argument that meat eaters have similar testosterone to vegans. Uh, they try to say soy isn't estrogenic. And there is far too much proof about the estrogenic effects of soy formula, the dangers of isoflavones. You want to make an argument saying soy isn't estrogenic, yet the reason I am standing here looking like a girl is because I was fed a soy formula. And now this clown of a narrator starts talking about cigarettes, trying to argue that the tobacco industry used to lie, so now the meat industry is lying. Really? Is that why Americans have been eating 70% plants for the past 50 years? The lobby behind grain, soy, corn, fruits, vegetables, Bayer, Monsanto, is far larger than any meat lobby. This is gaslighting at its finest. They attempt to dispel the wisp of confusion that pops up in the media from time to time, that meat or eggs is okay. I don't even know why they brought this up because the conventional appeal to authority ideas are in favor of plant-based. Very few people in the mainstream acknowledge keto or meat-based diets. They still have reservations. Then we go out to Africa with a group of people that is protecting rhinos from poachers. One guy who was patrolling protecting an animal every day said it didn't make sense to eat meat every night when he was protecting a rhino. Pretending there isn't a difference between using an animal for a trophy versus nourishment, it's comical how they compare shooting an endangered species for sport to eating a steak for dinner. Moving into the environment, saying that animal agriculture is destroying land, which is hypocritical considering every form of conventional agriculture destroys land, and that animals naturally grazing is what is required for regenerative agriculture. Uh, they try to say that animals are using up water. Yeah, keep growing those almond trees, th that lettuce, very high water usage in, in vegan diets as well. It's, it's not exclusive to meat, and those numbers are always foggy. Uh, of course, this leads to emissions, yet there is absolutely no proof there is a man-made impact on climate change as CO2 is only 4% of greenhouse gases, while water vapor accounts for 96%, and we don't know much about water vapor. Even if this climate change nonsense was true, they are blaming meat when they should be blaming factories, corporations, especially overpopulation. They aren't telling you to stop driving to McDonald's or having kids but they sure do want to take your meat away. Oh yeah, no, go to McDonald's, buy the Beyond Burger instead of the, the Beef Burger. So what's the lesson from this documentary? I guess if you're a professional athlete and want to throw your career down the drain, you can go vegan. It's very important to point out that every single thing said in this documentary is completely incorrect. It's misinterpreting what's going on. It's fear-mongering. But the takeaway from this is that they want to control you they want to control the food supply. 
They want to keep making money. And above all of this, we have to start fighting against it, making other people aware of this and pointing things out. If someone starts bringing up the documentary, starts saying, hey, that guy had to retire. Hey, he got injured. Hey, she came in last place. We have to educate people and inform them on the realities that you need high quality, nutrient dense animal foods as a basis in our diet as humans to be healthy. Thank you guys for joining me. If you could please like the video, subscribe, hit that bell icon, share the video if you can. If you guys would like to support me further, definitely check out Frankie's Free Range Meat, providing you with high quality, nutrient dense animal foods, always at an affordable price. Go to frankiesfreerangemeat.com. You can also check out Frankie's Naturals, minimal ingredients, minimally processed hygiene and cosmetic products, such as my lip balm. This one tube has lasted me, I think like six months right now, by far uh, the most effective lip balm. And I'm not making any money on it. So, so definitely buy something besides the lip balm. Uh, thanks again for joining me, guys, and enjoy the rest of your day.